Welcome to Prophetic Dateline. It, this has been quite a holiday season. We've been busy. We've been very We've been busy. busy. It's been great. Yeah, and I preached so hard, I don't know what I did to my voice, something, you know, but I'm I'm getting the healing, but it sounds weird, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm expecting you to get a healing while we're shooting the program. Okay. So I'm, why not, you know? We have a delightful, delightful prophet with us. You know, some prophets are can be a little sour, but Matt Sorger is not that. He's fun, he, he's uplifting, and he carries a unique anointing to fill rooms with the glory of God. I mean, you know, so when you, I've watched you, Matt, you minister, it's just like the power of God just comes. It's like, it's like a switch turns on or something. I love how you do that. I love how you do that. And he's a teacher, he's ministered in at least 35 nations reaching reach over 200 nations by television and media and some people don't know this about you and stephanie his beautiful wife they oversee rescue one rescuing children from trafficking around the world and they want to see 1500 children set free and i ask him these questions i know you have some books matt he has power for life and i love this new one you guys need to get this book god's unstoppable breakthrough i mean it is incredible and he has a mentoring courses matt sorger mentoring.com and uh, so today we're going to talk about being a feeler what 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 is a feeler yeah cindy and my first great happy new year great to be with you guys <laughs> um i know god has something powerful for us today um you know as i was praying over this 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 prophetic broadcast i really felt that the lord was going to impart to people a higher level of an ability to discern and to see and feel and sense things in the spiritual realm so that they can wage powerful and effective warfare and see the results that they want to see in their lives in 2022. Um, I know for me, being a feeler, uh, basically being a feeler is your senses are heightened to the realm of the spirit, to what is invisible. And when I think about feeling and discerning in the spirit, there's lots of ways to discern, but one of the ways to discern is through feeling things. So for me, discernment is seeing beyond the surface. It's, it's seeing beyond what is apparent on the surface and what's really going on behind the scenes, what's really operating behind the scenes. Mm. And, and I think if we are going to be powerful in the spirit and our prayers are going to be effective in 2022 to shift things, we have to be able to discern what is going on behind the scenes. So, mm. uh, and part of that is God wiring people as feelers. And, and it's, it's a very powerful concept. When you are a feeler, you're a highly sensitive person. You're a very intuitive person. Um, not only are you intuitive to the Holy Spirit, you're also very intuitive to other people. You're intuitive to situations. And, and you can sense things beyond just what it looks like on the surface. Yeah, the and, whole spirit realm. You know, angels, yes, demons, whatever. Yes. Mm -hmm. When did you yeah. first... When did you first get a sense that that you had that, I don't know what you say, as part of your personality, or part of your gifting, or, yeah, or part of who gifted. you are? Because mm -hmm. I, I believe that there are people who are not even in the kingdom yet, but they are feelers and, and they're predisposed yeah. to being that way. When did you first notice this in your life? Yeah, 100%. Well, I think it is, you're right, Mike, it's a combination of your temperament and a spiritual gifting. And and when the spiritual gift comes in line with that, um, it just heightens the whole thing. But for me, I was a I was a child. I mean, I was always very intuitive, very sensitive to people and to situations going around in my life. Um, and then when I got saved at 14, then the first spiritual gift I received from the Holy Spirit was in my early teen years, and it was this gift of discerning of spirits. So I was in prayer one day in my room. I, I love to pray as a teenager and I would spend time in worship and spend time in prayer in my room. And I remember when I asked the Holy Spirit to fill me and as you know, I was developing in my relationship with God, I started to get this desire rise up in my heart to be able to discern in the spirit realm. I don't know why I had this desire. It just came from inside of me. So I started to pray for it. And then it was like one day this gift was imparted to me by God. 
and I started to feel everything. And I am <laughs> wired that way, right? Some people are wired very logical, just very like that. And then other people are just, they just, they're feelers. They, they, they just feel everything. Well, when this gift came into me, what was activated in me, it was like the spiritual realm went, whoo, you know, and I started to feel um, the Holy Spirit more. I started to feel the presence of angels. I mean, I'd be in my bedroom praying and I could sense where angels were in my bedroom. Um, I would even start to sense the demonic and I'd start to feel when demons were in operation. So for me, it was all brand new and I had to learn a lot of lessons as I was navigating this feeler dimension. Now, Matt, <clears throat> okay. Was anybody else in your family like that? Could anybody explain what was going on with you? You know what, Cindy? We all got saved at the same time. Oh. So I, I didn't have um, in my family, like my mom and dad, we all got saved at the same time. So it was all new for all of us, right? And I think, honestly, in my family, I was the only one wired this way. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only, the only one. Martian in the family, the huh? <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and my parents, <laughs> thank God for my mom, you know, she prayed for me a lot, you know, to, to really, you know, um, just learn and grow in this and <clears throat> they had to navigate me as a teenager, um, being so spiritually sensitive, they, they had to try to help me navigate that. Um, but they couldn't necessarily teach me what to do. Yeah. So you, and I understand this cause I was like this too. You walk in a room and you're thinking, Oh, this person's suicidal. This person, mm -hmm you know, is oppressed right now, you know, uh, this person's going the wrong direction in their life. And it just literally just gangs up on you. It's just overwhelming, yeah. you know, right? Yeah. That's, that's how it was. Because when I realized the spiritual realm was so real, I and I felt it. Um, for me, now everyone's different. But for me, in the beginning, I became like number one ghostbuster. I was I was like, you know, <laughs> demon chaser, I was so focused on the demonic. And it became overwhelming in a sense that I would feel oppressed. I would walk into a room and if there was something negative operating there, I would feel it come over on top of me. And I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to get out from underneath it. And I'd be wrestling and battling and praying. And it just always felt like that. And it was exhausting. It really became mm -hmm. exhausting for me because mm -hmm. I felt so mm -hmm. much and mm -hmm. I didn't really know what to do. And, um, but I realized this time went on, there's a purpose for it. There's a purpose. There's a God purpose for discernment, of course, to help other people. Um, there's a reason why God lets you feel things. But then I also had to learn to draw healthy spiritual boundaries in my life where I didn't mm -hmm. just come under everything and, and take it on myself. But I had to learn. I had to learn my authority in Christ. I had mm -hmm. to learn how to be insulated in the glory of God. I had to learn mm -hmm. how to magnify God way bigger than the devil. Cause it's not like God and the devil are equal fighting. It's big God, little devil. And, yeah. and that was probably the most important lesson I learned is where God said, Hey, you got to see me for how big I am. And you got to see the devil for how small he is. And it helped me take this discernment that I was getting and put it in right perspective where it didn't blow the devil up so big, but it really shrunk him down. And, mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, I, I remember the day God spoke to me, Cindy, and he said, he, been, he began to teach me about worship and just really cultivating the presence of God in my life and really becoming more aware of the glory, more aware of the presence of God than of the demonic. So yeah. even though I would still discern it, the presence of God would be stronger than the demonic realm. Right. So, We're not into yeah. dualism, which means God and Satan are equal in power. You know, right. God is the almighty God. I really like that phrase you used, Matt, the insulated in the glory of God. You might just, yeah. I think you spoke to it a little, but unpack that just yeah. a little. And do you have a verse like that you can <clears throat> throw in here about that, about the glory? Yeah. Well, I know it's like when you worship, you know, um, I would say, you know, there's so many scriptures connected to this, but even Jesus saying, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly till it overflows. And mm -hmm. to me, the overflow mm -hmm. is the fact that Holy Spirit lives in your spirit, man, that he, he, he has taken residence in you, but he wants to overflow from your spirit into your soul, into your body and around mm -hmm. you. 
So mm -hmm. this is where you develop a life of worship where you are just so exalting God and so focused on him that his presence, his glory overflows from the inner sanctuary of your heart to your soul, which is your emotions, your mind, and then your body, and then outside of you, all around you. Uh, and this is where you can be a feeler and not just um, not just feel what's happening, but shift what's happening. Because when you overflow and experience that abundant life in the presence of God, you can walk into a room and there could be demonic activity there. But when you walk in, because of that overflow, you shift the atmosphere. And that's where God wants to bring people to. If they are feelers, if they are intuitive, if they are highly sensitive, you don't just, you don't just, um, you don't just discern the atmosphere, but you can shift the atmosphere. And this has helped me so much in ministry when I go into churches, even because honestly, not every church is like, really, not every church is really filled with the presence, the glory of God. It should be, but sometimes you walk into a church and it's like, oh, you know, what's going on here? And, and you got to shift that atmosphere. You got to break through that atmosphere. And that's where you got to know that, that you got to know your authority in Christ and you got to know how big God is that as you speak his word, atmosphere shift, demons run. And so you don't just discern it, but then you shift it. Yeah, you know, I remember when I was at college, I was going to Grand Canyon. It was college since university now in the Phoenix area. I'd walk into the student center and I could hardly stand it. You know, I think this person's suicidal, this person's having mm -hmm. trouble in their marriage. I mean, it was just like it would all pile on top of me yeah. until the Lord told me, look, the prophet of God is blind, should be blind except to the things I want you to see. Mm. If I want you, if I'm showing <clears throat> it to you, then I'm going to give you that heaven. Like you said, the glory of God will come. The power of God will come and you're going to deal with this situation or mm -hmm. else you're just there with your sword, you know, kind of swinging randomly everywhere and you, you can become very oppressed. Yeah. yeah. But you know, there's another dynamic to this too. I think, um, you know, Matt, Matt exudes the joy of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you just, you do. It's part, it comes out of you, you know, and when, when the joy of the Lord uh, is, the, at, that atmosphere begins to exude out of you, demons manifest in some cases. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. just a matter of feeling them, they're feeling you. <laughs> and when that joy <laughs> confronts, you know, there's New Testament yes. scriptures of demons crying out, of different yeah. things manifesting and, and it was and the lord just dealt with it yeah you know he would just deal with it and then move on but that's that's that whole it's, it's just amazing that to be in the kingdom of god and he gives you this ability to manifest his kingdom through the joy mm -hmm. of his kingdom and it gets people <coughs> set free right. and it doesn't even take a long time man when when you see someone will start manifesting and the disciples had to deal with this too because they were saying oh you guys are the great servants of god and they, well that was a true statement spoken by a demonic presence and they they basically told it just be quiet mm -hmm. you know they dismissed it and so it's i guess yeah. the good thing is is knowing that because you go into a room and knowing knowing that you can change the atmosphere of a place where you are um, and the ultimate purpose of that is to have people get a taste of the kingdom of God and the freedom that comes with that just simply because of the joy of the Lord that it comes out of you. Right. Yeah, give us an example of when the, you know, there was a demonic situation, but the glory of God came kind of give us a, some oh, examples. Yeah. Oh, I have so many, but Mike, what you're saying, and I'll jump off off of this the kingdom is righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit mm -hmm. so these for feelers for the for all the feelers out there these are the three keys righteousness peace and joy when you develop when you cultivate righteousness a right walk with god it removes any legal landing place the enemy can have in your life so as a feeler you can discern but the enemy doesn't have a place to land in you right so you stay free and clear righteousness peace and joy and that joy, Mike, as it overflows, Cindy, it does break things in the spirit. So we've had times where, I mean, the presence of God comes in. And as God's presence comes in, miracles happen, deliverance happens, demons come out of people. Um, I remember there was, there was one service where the Lord spoke to me. 
about um, a woman that would be healed of um, MS, multiple sclerosis, right? So she was like under real oppression with this. And so we were in a service and the Lord said, call this out. And a woman comes forward and God said to me, my glory is on the platform right now. So bring her from the altar up onto the platform yes. and have her just stand in my glory. Mm -hmm. So she came up and just stood there, right? No, I didn't lay hands on her, nothing. She just stood there. Mm -hmm. And the power of God came over her. I mean, she went back under the power of God. The presence of God overwhelmed her. And when she got up, all the MS was gone. She said it felt like a hand reached into the back of her head and was moving her brain around. It was like <laughs> divine surgery was performed on her. Wow. And all the MS just was gone. And I saw this woman two years later. I didn't even recognize her. She said, do you remember me? Yeah. You came here two years ago. And I said, no, I don't remember you. Who are you? She said, I was a lady healed of MS. And, and she said, I lost weight. I got a new hairdo. I got a new job. I got new clothes, got new shoes. She's like, God gave my life a total overhaul. But this is what happens when, when the glory comes in and the Holy Spirit comes in, demons leave, sickness leaves. I mean, we've seen, we've seen people set free from suicide, Cindy. There was one, a teenage girl that came up to my resource table at the end of a meeting. And she told me, she said, recently, she said she saw her mother commit suicide. She Ooh. saw it. Oh. And it was so traumatizing to her. She said when it happened to her, when she saw this, from that moment on, she had constant suicide thoughts. Like every day, she just would think about killing herself. And she said, I wow. don't know what to do. I can't get this out of my mind. So we just started to pray. And as we prayed, the presence of God came. And she wrote me the next morning. And this is where it's like this discernment that we're talking about. It's like when you discern in the spirit, you can hit the target, right? It's not just praying these prayers, but it's hitting the target. And um, I could discern that spirit of fear, that spirit of trauma that attached to her. And we just commanded it to loose her and to leave her. And the next morning she writes me on Facebook and she says, I just got to tell you, I woke up this morning and for the first time, my mind was clear. And I couldn't even believe that I wasn't like obsessing about suicide that I even tried to make myself think of suicide and I couldn't even make myself think on it. It was like my mind was just so clear and free from that. So this this is what happens. I think we should stop and pray for people that maybe you're watching the show and you're you're oppressed. You're yeah. oppressed mm -hmm. by the enemy and you've been having suicidal thoughts and just not being able to uh, get over them. I, I remember very godly man I knew who was in Israel and he said all of a sudden the spirit of suicide came on him and just said go jump off the balcony he was in very high in a, in a hotel and he said it was so strong it was all he could do as mature as he was even to resist that so don't feel bad if you've been having those thoughts you know we're we're going to pray for you so Matt just pray for people would you please and operate yeah. by word of knowledge in it yeah Lord I thank you right now that you are this is a, a divine appointment for you watching right now. Yeah. And Lord, I thank you that even as we begin this year, that you are loosing people from trauma today. And I just really discern and sense right now that God is going to unlock and he's going to remove a trauma that has tried to attach to you to try to really hold you back from being able to move forward. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over all trauma that has come against you. And we command that trauma to loose you and to let you go in the name of Jesus. Father, we cut off suicide thoughts. We cut off the spirit of anxiety. We cut off the spirit of depression. We cut off the spirit of fear. We cut these things off of people right now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we say, be free in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, right now for your anointing that will touch people and will really deliver them, deliver them. Lord, I thank you that the joy of the Lord is their strength. And I pray right now for an infusion of joy. Infuse them right now with joy. I feel like someone is getting anointed with the oil of joy today. And that joy is really going to heal you. And so, Father, I release that joy into them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Amen. Well, you know, uh, the Lord is showing me there's somebody you have bought some pills to kill yourself with. And you have them and you are just in your own way, kind of saying goodbye to whatever, but, uh, and to people, but the, but the Lord sees, I see those pills mm -hmm. 
And the Lord just says, you were to throw those pills away. Mm. You are not to, to do that. I see somebody else, you've been a cutter, you've been using razor blades and you're cutting yourself, but you're now gonna decide, you've decided you're gonna slit your wrist. And the Lord just says, no, in fact, there's somebody named Daniel watching and you have really thought about doing this and plan to do this. I see somebody else named Gloria. You're under this oppression of, um, of suicide. And the Lord just says no to that, no to that. It is broken. It is broken today. And I want to say what, what Matt was saying is so important because, <clears throat> you know, maybe you're a feeler and you, like he said, you know, like that woman was obviously a feeler that you said, you know, she, this, her mother committed suicide, but that spirit got on her. Yeah, it could be a familial spirit. Yeah, yeah. But, but when you prayed it left, sometimes, if you don't understand how to separate your emotions in a uh -huh. situation like that, like, like I've come into a room before and all of a sudden felt lust. And, mm -hmm. you know, I used to go tear myself apart. Like, is there anything in there? Da, da, da. And I realized, no, no, that person over there had a spirit of lust and it was trying to get on me to cooperate mm -hmm. with that lust, you know? Mm -hmm. So don't, you know, just, just be attuned. You know, uh, one thing I love is that Matt has incredible teaching material at his mattsorgermentoring.com on discernment on being a feeler. Uh, you know, maybe you just need to go to school. If, if you're watching, you're saying, yeah, I recognize I have discernment, I'm a feeler. You have to learn how to cooperate with your gift. Or my child, you know. Yeah, or your child. My child's like 10, 12 years old. Yeah. They've, they've had this, uh, this, it seems like they're always feeling yeah, things, yeah. then that needs to be that needs to be guided into proper a proper position in their life. And this kind of training, there's not a lot of this kind of training no. out there, Cindy. No, there really and isn't. So they really ought to take advantage of that. Yeah. Because I mean, otherwise it's overwhelming to people who are feelers. Matt, you know this. You can just can get overwhelmed with this. Yeah. And, and it's not until you learn to walk in the glory and walk mm -hmm. in the joy of the Lord that it begins, it's like a, it moderates the, the feeler gift, you know, and directs it in the, in the way it needs to go. So, are, do so you, this teaching would be great. Yeah, so do you, tell us, are you teaching people how to discern when it's an angel or a demon or even the human yeah. spirit? Discern, the gift yeah. of discernment can discern the human yeah. spirit. Yeah, we are teaching all of that. I love what you said, Cindy, and I have to, I have to hit on this as well, that when you're a feeler, you have to learn the difference between yourself and what you're discerning. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people will feel something and they think it's them. And they mm -hmm. got to learn to separate when it's discernment and when it is just them. And, and it's two different things. So in our course, we teach on all the levels of discernment, how to discern angels, demons, the Holy Spirit, the human spirit. Even Jesus was able to even know the thoughts and intents of the heart mm -hmm. of other people. Mm -hmm. So it's even mm -hmm. discerning the realm of the human spirit. Uh, mm -hmm. We teach, though, how to discern from the glory, that when you are a feeler, when you're wired intuitively, mm -hmm. how do you not come under what you're feeling, but how do you discern from over, from a position mm -hmm. of being over it? So mm -hmm. we cover all mm -hmm. of that, how to insulate mm -hmm. yourself, but really then how to take that discernment and turn it into powerful, effective prayers mm -hmm. and, and how to shift atmospheres as well. So mm -hmm. I want to give everyone that's watching today a 50% discount on this course. Oh my goodness. And we'll do the code FEELER50. You go to mattsaugermentoring.com. Are you a feeler course? Put in the code FEELER50. You'll get 50% off of it. Because I wow. feel like more people need to be equipped in this and they need, to be, they need to be raised up in this. And we're in a time where prophetically, God wants to make it so sharp in the spirit. He wants to really anoint us. And I even feel this for people watching today. God wants to anoint them and even increase their ability to discern so that they are ruling from a heavenly place. And, and this isn't just going to affect them. It's going to affect their families. It's going to affect their, their children. It's going to affect, going to bring family breakthroughs. So their marriage and yeah, marriage. Their marriage. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And also in a marriage, you need to be able to discern. Now, listen, this is important for some of you married couples. You need to be able to discern. There are times when like the Leviathan spirit, which breaks down communication, brings confusion, has tried to come between Mike and I. And we just realized, wait a minute. This is Satan trying to get us to oppose each other. This is that Leviathan spirit. Yeah. And we yeah. prayed and we broke it. Or, or uh, particularly, I, uh, 
I had talked to our intercessors recently. We were getting ready to go somewhere to minister. And the Lord told me, have them pray against a spirit of contention. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. if you can pick that, you go into a place and you may be all good. Everything's fine with you and the Lord. You walk into it and if that spirit has been loosed in that, uh, mm -hmm. in that facility or, or in that area, it will try to come on you. Mm -hmm. And you're going like, wait a minute. Uh, this is, there's something wrong yeah, here. And I'm not subject to that. Yeah. And you need to know how to do that. Now, yeah. The other thing that, that I think is really important You have to know what here, spirit you're of. Remember, we used to talk about someone who's a believer, loves God, cares about people deeply, but they can become a wounded burden bearer. Mm -hmm. They pick up on things and as someone who has a sickness or someone has a, has some kind of issue in their life. Some people have even taught that you need to take that on yourself off of them take the sickness or yeah whatever. and and you know it's almost like well i would that i were the one that were sick instead of you listen real dangerous subtle things that satan can do and he can get you all messed up you know and and really he's taking the gifting god has given you and twisting it that would really be an, a manifestation mm -hmm. of leviathan mm -hmm. who's twisting the good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and taking it and if you take that on you listen we've seen people who do that and they die of the disease of the person that they mm -hmm. thought just simply because they did not understand yeah. spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Mike, it reminds me of the time I, I used to minister at a church. This was years ago in, in Australia. And so we would, I ministered there maybe four times over the course of four or five years. And the first time I went in, I was totally blindsided. I didn't realize what was happening behind the scenes, but we would go into this church and the first time I went with my dad and then um, I went with Stephanie after we got married and it was like that thing you're talking about, that contention, that conflict, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it would just be like war would break out. And I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? They love every each other. Single, it was like every single time we went to <clears> this <throat> church, it, it was like outside of the meetings, all hell would break loose. And, but I learned, I was like, the third or fourth time in, I was like, okay, I don't know why this warfare is here, but we got to be ready for it. And I would go in much more prepared. Well, I found out several years after that, that behind the scenes, the pastor was having affairs and there was marital conflict behind the scenes. Everything looked perfect on the surface, but behind the scenes was all this stuff going on. And it was demonic and we would walk into it not ready for it and all yeah. of a sudden it would swirl around it us. blindsided you yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah i but, remember one time being in australia this was maybe in 91 or 92 and uh i love australia okay so that's not yes, australia bashing australia. but <laughs> yeah but um uh, and all of a sudden i was feeling horribly rejected mm. like just what was i doing there i should turn around and go home there was and I, and I have learned now that there are spirits over certain regions and you can come in and that tries to come upon you in your emotions. So you have to be skillful how to separate. And so then I found out that we were in a place where the first women were brought to Australia and they were raped all night. The first women colonists, you know, the penal colonists. Yeah. And so there was a spirit there. It's very interesting because the next day, my buddy, John Dawson, came into the meeting. He didn't know how I was feeling. He goes, I think the men need to repent right now for rejecting women <laughs> and, you know, just what has happened in your history. And when that was done, it lifted off me. Wow. Never again. Probably a lot of other people got yeah. lifted yeah, off yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. So we have so to be skillful. You were discerning a territorial stronghold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And there are, I mean, you know, this is a good point, even not only just, it might be that that, that couple that was in all that contention, they might've moved into an area where there was already a spirit of contention or divorce or whatever, or lust, which was probably the key to the, whatever. The yeah. Thing, so they yeah. didn't know. And so I think we've got to uh, as you talked about discernment, not, not just certain people with the gift of discernment, but all of us, listen to me, I'm talking to you, all of us need to understand how to discern by the Holy Spirit. We need to. If we're going to live a victorious life, 
And, you know, so sometimes now I'll go into an area and I'll just bind the principalities and powers before I get there. And I'll say, look, I'm coming to your country and you're not going to mess with me. You're gonna, not going to hurt my emotions. You're not going to hurt relationships. And I just tell you, you know, that Spanish word, bust, enough is enough. Stop it, you know. And uh, so I think that could be kind of what you're saying. Yeah. Well, you know, Cindy, the, the, uh, Matt was there when the prophets were talking in our meeting, our apostolic council, prophetic elders. There was a sensing that God wants to have us have an upgrade mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... You're responsible for upgrading your own skill set, you yeah. know, the things that God has given you. And that's why, you know, people like Matt are, are given to say, well, wait a minute, I need to prepare material that, that really will be an upgrade. If you're a feeler, you need to understand what this is, how to do it, how to flow in it. And so this being a year of upgrade or a season of upgrade, take advantage of the materials that are there yeah. to upgrade yourself, particularly if you've recognized, oh, uh, from what they're saying, I didn't realize I'm a feeler that yeah. there's some people that are feelers. I need to know what to do about that. Well, sharpen. yeah, you do need to know what to do about that. Yeah. And so take advantage of the yeah. materials. That... Sharpen your discernment. Absolutely. Sharpen. Absolutely. Uh, regardless. And, uh, you know, um, can you tell us any testimony of someone who took the mentoring course and uh, something that happened for them? Oh, yeah. We've got, Cindy, we literally, we've had hundreds of people go through this course and their lives are changed. Um, oppression has come off of them. They learn to separate their emotions from what they're feeling in the spiritual realm. I remember mm -hmm. there was, um, I had spoken to a husband and wife. And so they were going through something. This is really interesting. They were going through something. So neither of them drank alcohol. They, you know, they both kind of came from in their family's alcoholic background. So both of them just chose in their life, we're not gonna drink any alcohol just because it's been in our family and whatever. Uh -huh. So one day they're in their they're in their house and the, the husband's at work and the, the wife is at home and she starts to feel this desire to drink alcohol. Well, at the same time, the husband at work, he starts to feel the desire to drink alcohol. Meanwhile, wow. they're alcohol free. They don't even drink alcohol. And they'll so they share it with each other when they get home and they're like, I don't know why I was feeling this today, but then as the wife began to pray into it, God revealed that the teenage son was secretly starting to drink alcohol. And what oh. happened was as the teenage was doing, teenage was doing that in secret, it was opening up a door for that generational spirit of alcoholism yes. to begin to wow. move in. <clears throat> so wow. while the parents don't drink, they discerned it by feeling the desire to drink. And then mm -hmm. when they realized what was happening, they were able to then pray for their, their son, their, their teenager. And then God was able to move in his life to help him overcome that and to really, you know, get free from it. But, but these are things like that, learning to recognize discernment. Cause otherwise you're just like, Oh, all of a sudden I want to drink alcohol and you think it's just yourself, but they learn, no, that's not you. That's actually a discernment God is giving you. So you can pray so that your child can be set free. Wow. Like yeah. That. And if you come from a family of alcoholics, it's not a good thing to become a drinker. You yeah. know, I mean, we're not, I mean, Mike and I don't drink any strong drink. We're, we're, Na Pepper. we're Nazarites. But I mean, if you do just be aware though, if you come from a line of alcoholics, that might not be an, a good idea. And I think, you know, we don't usually uh, push this hard, you know, our, our materials of people. But it's, an, it's a but, season for upgrade. Yeah, but we really feel, and I want to say to you as we, as we close, that it's very important for you to take this course and uh, uh, MattSorgerMentoring.com, and you said if they'll say filler, feeler 50, what's the code they're going to? Yeah, the code, the code is feeler 50. If they go to MattSorgerMentoring.com, just scroll down the page and look for the course, Are You a Feeler? and click on it and it'll give them the information. So you're gonna have to develop this uh, code though, right? I mean, put yes. the coupon code yeah. on. Yep, when in the checkout, they could put the coupon feeler 50. Okay, okay, and that'll work. All right, well, yep. thank you, Matt. I think that this is so important. And uh, let's just take a moment and pray for the feelers. Are <laughs> <laughs> somebody married to a feeler, yeah, you know? Yeah, particularly that. <laughs> I mean, like, if you're married to a feeler and you're not a feeler, 
it can be quite difficult. You know, it's like, oh, gosh, you yes. know, they, they might say, what's wrong with you? It's a beautiful day. And you're and the feelers going, oh, something really bad is going to happen. You know what I mean? Or it's like going to a geographic <laughs> area. Like I remember we'd be driving along and Cindy would go, whoa, there's something. And she starts describing this demonic presence. <laughs> I'm going like, I'm fat, dumb and happy. It's like, wow, it's a really pretty day today. The challenge was, after being around her for a while, it starts getting on you. And so now we'll be driving along and I go, oh, man, did you feel the change in the spiritual atmosphere here? So anyway, you, you need to know what to do with that. So that's why we're kind of pushing you a little to, to and it is a season of upgrade. So yeah. let's all commit to upgrade yeah. our spiritual so skills and yeah. giftings and during get his this books, coming season. Get his books, Power for Life and God's Unstoppable Breakthrough. That is a phenomenal, I love that book. And uh, uh, also remember that we have mentoring courses on spiritual warfare. You're saying, oh, Cindy, you're kind of like giving all these golden nuggets and on the prophetic if you need to be mentored. And my new book, Reformers Arise, Revival and Reformation. And we want you to get that, go on Amazon and get it and tell your friends, let's pop the numbers up on that, you know, and, and just uh, uh, amaze Amazon that the people of God are so informed and, and uh, I'm sure that you can get uh, Matt's books there also. Well, any final comments, Matt? I just, I believe today it is a season of upgrade and God is going to elevate his people. God's going to elevate you that are watching uh, into really a place of ruling and reigning with Christ. Yeah. You are over, you are not under, and God is going to annihilate every work of the enemy that's tried to hinder you, hold you back. This is a season of breakthrough. It's a season of release. It's a season of divine emergence where you are going to really come into the fullness of who God has called you to be and what God has called you to do. This is your, this is your now time. Now is the day of the divine favor of God on your life. Amen. Amen. Well, Michael, anything? Well, I'm just, I'm just so grateful that the, of the people who uh, watch Prophetic Dateline and listen, tell your friends about this. This is a really good program. This would be a good episode uh, for, for people to say, you know, I, I didn't really make any New Year's resolutions because I never fulfilled them. And so I'm not going to make New Year's resolutions. What we're saying to you, this is your season of upgrade. We've all three been telling you this is your season of upgrade. Uh, tell your friends about this because we want as many people as possible to become powerful in the things of the Spirit in this coming season. So we love you. Thank you for love watching you. the program. Thank you. Tell people about it. And and start being upgraded in this coming season. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Love you. Amen. Love Cindy, you. Say hi to Stephanie. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. You're awesome. You you are just a, such an amazing mother and father in the prophetic movement. And this prophetic dateline that you guys are doing, it's it's really helping so many people. We, Stephanie and I, wholeheartedly love you guys and thank God for you all the time. You're amazing. Thank you. Love you. God bless you. Bye now. Till next week.